Hello everyone, my name is Alex. Today, I'd like to share with you some of the most popular questions we received. As you know, we've been taking your questions through our main email, prisonlive at neighborcorp.com, and we're getting about 100 questions and suggestions a day through that alone, which is amazing. We appreciate our interest, and we are always trying to do our best to improve and get you better answers. But at some point, we felt the need to organize some of the most frequently asked questions. So today, out of the many questions we received, we've selected the top eight questions that you're most curious about, and we're going to go through them one by one. Let's answer these questions together. Who knows, maybe some of these questions will be answered right away, so let's get started. Seriously, this is a question that comes up all the time. TikTok and Instagram are very popular social media platforms right now, and Kick is a fast-growing laugh platform too. It's no wonder we get many questions about these platforms. The Prism app does not offer functional integration with these platforms yet. This means that you won't be able to integrate and use your platform accounts through the Prism app. The reason is quite simple. In order for the Prism app to integrate with these platforms, they need to provide an open API that third parties, like the Prism app, can use. However, they have not yet provided the API. So streaming to these platforms requires somewhat cumbersome method of retrieving RTMP information from them and then applying it directly to the custom RTMP feature of the Prism application. We are anticipating for them to provide an open API at some point and then working with them to integrate their platform with our application as soon as possible. Monetization is a very important aspect for YouTube channels. YouTube's Live Control Room offers a number of features to help you with this, but we were unable to set these options in the Prism app. Unfortunately, the reasons are similar to the previous answer. The API doesn't yet exist to provide these functionality, but we have heard that YouTube is preparing to provide an external API for this. Prison Live Studio is working with the YouTube team on this and should have some good news to share soon, so stay tuned. This question we've been hearing a lot from our users for now. First, let's get one thing straight. The difference between a watermark and an outro. In the Prism application, there is a watermark and an outro. First, the watermark is the app's logo that appears in the lower right corner of the screen during a live stream. It appears for about 10 seconds per minute out by default. But it's important to note that you can remove that from the app settings menu. The outro, on the other hand, is the black background scene that appears at the end of the live stream. Currently, the Prism app doesn't offer a way to remove this outro. In the Prism app, when you click the end button to end your live stream, there is a delay for about three seconds before the actual stream ends. During this time, the Prism application's outro is shown. Discussions about the ability to customize the outro are ongoing. Once we have an announcement regarding this, we'll share the news on our Medium blog. One of the reasons that streaming games from the Prism Windows application was difficult was that the game capture feature did not work with all games. This forced many users to use the window capture feature as an alternative. We have some good news on that front. The 2023 revamped Prism Windows app v4 will be fully implemented based on OBS 29. This will be expanded to a range of games that can be captured. Of course, we will need to talk with uh, various game companies to better support this, but please know that we're working on it and this is something that will be improved quickly. We're always working to improve the game streaming experience. Streaming tools typically support two types of multi-streaming approaches. The first is to stream the same video to multiple live platforms. The second is to use a gateway server to relay the video. The first approach is to stream the same video to multiple live platforms simultaneously. This method is simple, but can be problematic due to network bandwidth limitations. For example, your modem will have to work harder to send the same video to multiple platforms simultaneously. Inefficient network bandwidth can prevent video from being transmitted smoothly. A major obstacle is that these problems can be even more severe in a mobile network environment. The Prism application takes a different approach to solving these problems. The Prism service uses gateway services around the world to route the video data. To overcome network bandwidth limitations, video is delivered to the gateway servers and then replicated into multiple copies for delivery to each platform. 
This way, even though you're multi-streaming, your network bandwidth and modems are doing the same amount of work as if you were streaming to a single platform. The music provided within Prism app is copyrighted by the Prism app. It may be used freely to in videos created through the Prism application. This applies to both live streams and VOD videos. However, these rights only apply to videos created using Prism application. If you want to use sound from the Prism app in other platforms or videos, you must follow the copyright rules and terms of those platforms or videos. If you are creating a video for commercial purposes or using sound from the Prism application on another platform, you should check the policies of that platform or the copyright administrator. We must emphasize this. You are only free to use sound from the Prism application in videos created with the Prism app. Smart route manufacturers may support a 60 frames per second functionality in their built-in applications, but limit in some applications that are not built in. It is believed that these restrictions are made by the manufacturers for reasons of profitability or feature stability. Of course, we recognize that this can be confusing for users of the Prism app, as the frames per second differs from the smartphone built-in apps. However, there are over 20,000 different types of Android devices in the world, and the Prism app cannot check this issue on every device. Therefore, we made the decision to stop supporting the 60 frames per second feature in our Android app to minimize inconveniences. This is out of respect for the manufacturer's decision and to avoid confusion for our users, and we hope you understand. Remember, 15, 24, and 30 frames per second are still supported on the Prism Android app. The paid version of the Prism application? In simple words, you can't, because there is no paid version of the Prism app. Did you answer your question? Today, we've answered the eight most frequently asked questions about Prism Live Studio. If you still have questions about the Prism app, feel free to drop us a line at our main email or in the comments below. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you next time. Bye.